Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Today we're going to take this GoPro Hero 7 Black and we're going to make it super light but in a different way than what most folks do. So we actually got stuck on the first step here which is taking off the lens because this is a very new camera. This thing is very hard to turn and that's how I ended up pulling my arm last night. <laughs> Trying to take this thing off and pull my arm. So the trick to this actually is you need to pull this a little bit forward and you see when you pull it forward, a little gap appears. So what we need to actually do is take two cards. So it could be credit cards, it could be you know, gift cards, anything. And what you want to do is you want to slide those in between this, this hole here to push the lens cover forward a little bit. And I don't take credit for this. I saw this on another video, but if we pull this forward a little bit, and then we can actually get this in here. So we can get this in like that. And then we want to do the same thing with the other side. Okay, so then what we can do is we can turn it so that we're prying both sides out. Okay. So now we should be able to easily twist it off. There we go. Before we get started, let's see how much this thing weighs. So lens cover is seven grams and the camera with the battery and the SD card is 115. That's how much it weighs uh, to begin with. All right, let's get going. We, we got ahead of ourselves a little bit here. You can see the camera is all complete. So let's back up a little bit. I'll link you up here to a video by Rimsler. He's got one of the best uh, disassembly instructions I've seen. So follow his instructions to disassemble your camera, then come back here and we'll keep moving forward. Now you may be thinking, Mangrel, you've lost your mind, but there really is a good reason to do it this way. And that reason being that we maintain the durability and the ruggedness of our GoPro Hero 7 camera. So we still have all of those uh, protections in place, but also we can use all of our stock uh, and the filter mounts, our camera mounts, none of that changes. But the benefits are no more forgetting to charge the battery and having to carry multiple GoPro batteries, all these things that we've kind of gotten used to, that's now out the door. You've got your one battery for your quad. I mean, hopefully I have more than one battery, but you, know, you have your quad battery and that's all you need. This GoPro runs off that battery, so as long as your quad is flying, your GoPro is recording. All right, so let's take this apart and we'll be right back. We managed to get the front face plate off. It's fairly good condition. And that was the most difficult piece because a lot of folks actually say that when you take this piece off, it ends up getting pretty destroyed and uh, mutilated. We got it off in very good condition. But only problem here is that we did end up breaking the front display. As you're prying around the edge over here, it looks like the display actually stops here, but it doesn't. The display goes almost right down to the edge. So as I was prying, I was prying pretty close to here. So I ended up actually breaking the display. But you know what? For our purpose, that's fine. We can keep going. When you're taking the GoPro apart, make sure you remove the SD card from the slot. As you can see, we ended up breaking ours because the SD card got stuck on the case. We didn't know this, we kept pulling and it broke. All right, now that we have our camera disassembled, you have your motherboard. We wanna do some soldering. You wanna use this ground point here. So you take one wire from this ground point all the way to this last piece over here. So let me bring it a little bit closer. To that point and what that does is it simulates the power button being pressed so as soon as you plug the camera in the power is going to be on i guess the camera is going to be on then you want to take the power cable that you're going to route to the outside of the camera you want to connect the ground cable up here so very similar and then on the other side is where you have your positive so this capacitor here is the positive so you'll solder to that it's very tiny but you should be able to do it with a nice, a decent soldering iron. You bring that cable down. There's a hole over here which you can route the cable out. And I'll put a little bit of glue on there just to make sure the cable doesn't chafe. But ultimately that's how the soldering looks. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and put it back together. We'll be right back. 
All right, so it's almost put back together. You can see that we brought the power cable out the side here. We use our soldering iron to make a hole and this cable fits perfectly in this hole and it's being held in by the actual cover. So this seems like it's the best way to do this. And I guess it retains a little bit of its um, like water tightness, moisture tightness, probably not much, but at least a little bit. And I'll give you a link in the description to where you can get the cable, this connector, they're all from Amazon. I will link you. And because we broke our display, we just removed that, which honestly, it's perfectly fine because you can't see that display anyway once you install this in your TPU mount. But let's keep going. We'll get this put back together. We'll glue down the case and then we'll take a look. To glue this cover on, we're gonna use our E6000 industrial strength adhesive. If it's good enough for the industry, it must be good enough for me. So we'll take this and what we need to do is put a good amount of this down over here and also around here. So we'll start with this, we'll just put a little bit on there and then go around the edge. I'm not sure why I did this. Let me take this off. All right, now we'll take this and we'll just end up clipping it in where it clips in. And then the rest is gonna require us to put a lot of pressure on to keep it all shut. So the way to do this is to grab some, and the best way to now keep it shut while the glue dries is to grab some electrical tape and then use this to just tape it shut. Let me install the door. And then pull this as tight as possible. And actually, well, I changed my mind. Let's install this first, because this should also give it some pressure. Yeah, so this will keep this part down, and then we'll use our tape to keep the rest of it down. So let's go as tight as possible. So as tight as you can make this, just go around. And now you see how this part pops out. We'll have to do that for that section as well. So we took a beautiful GoPro and this is, this is what we came up with. <laughs> It looks like it's seen better days, but you know what, bear with me, it'll be fine. So now we can see that it's pretty good. Maybe we can put a little clamp here as well. But now all we gotta do is wait for the glue to dry. So this part's good. That's good. So just a little bit on this side. So I think we'll use a clamp to clamp this piece down for a couple of hours until the glue dries. So we'll use this clamp just to put a little bit of pressure on the corner. Yeah, so now you can see how it's nicely closed. A little bit of glue is uh, oozing out, but that's fine. So we'll leave this for a couple of hours and then we'll be right back. It's been a couple of hours now and as we can see, the glue has dried and this looks pretty good. We could have used a bit more pressure on this side with our clamp, but otherwise, yeah, this is fine. I'm, I'm happy with this. So what we wanna do now is come to our flight controller and within our flight controller, we wanna find a five volt pad. So you gotta make sure your flight controller has a decent uh, battery limiter or, or BEC. And this one here, this is the iFlight one. It actually has five volts at 2.5 amps, which is perfect. So you wanna make sure you're at least one amp or more. If your BEC doesn't have enough power, the GoPro will keep restarting. 
which is what happened when we initially did this. We had a Hobbywing G3 stack, and that's a 0.6 amp. And the GoPro would start recording and then restart. Recording, restart. That's when we thought we actually screwed up the GoPro. But here we have our positive and negative. We have our connector, which I've linked to you in the description to uh, Amazon. We have it connected to our five volts. So let's plug it in. So we'll go ahead and plug in our GoPro. And now if I go ahead and plug the battery in, so we should see that the GoPro has powered on. And because we put that extra wire, there was no need to do any power button. So as soon as it's plugged in, it's now active. We have our touch screen, so everything is actually working pretty well here. All right, let's do a quick weigh. So it was 115 grams beforehand, and now it's 81. So we've saved pretty good amount of weight here by removing the battery, and not only a big weight savings, but no longer do we have to worry about the battery not being charged and, and carrying multiple batteries with us. And the good thing is on this version of the firmware, even if the battery gets disconnected mid-recording, the recording seems to be fine. All right, so this I think is a successful operation. All right, so let's uh, put this back together and we'll go outside, do a quick test flight and make sure everything works fine.